there are other aspects at this particular uh, new moon. As I said, there is the beginning of a Mercury retrograde. So here's where I'm going to give you the Mercury retrograde preview. Mercury sits at that fourth degree of Virgo. The retrograde dates again are August 5th through 28th, and the kickoff energy includes this conjunction to Venus here in Leo. So all of this is Venus energy at this lunation as well. And if you're listening to the Mercury retrograde exclusive, have a listen to the full light worker energy update if you want to understand the Venusian aspects to this particular new moon. We have a square to that Mars in Gemini as well. We have a trine to Ceres and Pholus who are conjunct in Capricorn here. I've been talking about them all year and I'll speak more to them in a moment. A sextile to the shaman's asteroid here or a semi-sextile to the shaman's asteroid here in Libra. We have a square to Uranus here in Taurus. And we have a sextile to the creation goddess in Scorpio. That's not the creation goddess, that's Pallas. Here's the creation goddess in Scorpio. So the start of this Mercury retrograde are going to color the themes for the entirety of it. So too will the shadow period energies. What it, what there is to consider is what came up in the area of your chart that governs Gemini and Virgo, the signs that Mercury governs. How You can also take a look at the houses that Virgo and Leo govern, because these are the signs that will host the Mercury retrograde itself. These houses in your natal chart are where you're going to have the most activity during the Mercury retrograde. Okay, and if you need some help understanding that, you can always book one of the 30 minute readings below or the one hour readings with a 20% off savings code that will allow you to have a look at how's this Mercury retrograde going to impact you as well as the upcoming eclipse season. So let's take these aspects one by one and localize their themes. Mercury retrograde conjunct Venus in and of itself. Mercury's consciousness and communication. We have, this lends itself to themes about attraction, beauty, and money and values over the course of the Mercury retrograde. If there were issues of this nature that you saw arise around and after July 16th, which is when the shadow period began, these issues are going to be a focal point as we move into the retrograde. Mercury will meet up with Venus once over the course of this retrograde period in which themes pertaining to what we value and what we're drawn to will come up very strongly. These will also be themes in which we may be able to communicate more times where we may be able to may be able to communicate more lovingly and kindly about the changes we're making to our lives to assist the people connected to the old self or the old section of our lives so that they can become more sovereign themselves as we step into changes that allow us greater sovereignty, specifically because Mercury is moving from the sign of discernment and decision-making back into the sign of sovereignty and creative authority, only to move back into decision-making and discernment a final time. And so this means that because we've got this activation specifically with Venus, We'll get some notification. What are you drawn to? And what decisions do you need to make about it? Clarity really shows itself during this Mercury retrograde. Mercury will also square Mars as part of the kickoff energy. And there, this means that the retrograde may have some Martian elements as Mars is squared to Venus and Mercury conjunct. Mars square to Venus brings a lot of passion and tension, the tension of desire without immediate gratification. 
And this can intensify the chemistry and passion around desiring something. This can also cause us to be pushy in what we might call sealing the deal. Mercury square Mars can have us saying things that we might regret or acting in ways that we can't undo. So for some, this will be helpful in helping you finally get things off your chest that needed saying for some time. For others, this is going to take the foot that is often in your mouth and shove it down your throat. Know which camp you fall into so you can prepare accordingly. Getting things done is also going to be a major theme as we're all feeling compelled to move toward, uh, move forward because of the other aspects here. Read the fine print. I just want to give this caveat on any contracts or agreements twice if they have to be signed during this period. If you can delay, that will be perfect as there are negotiable, if there are negotiable terms that could be revisited after signing once Mercury goes direct. There is some indication that the nervous system can feel overstimulated in this energy as well. So uh, there could be some like hastiness or jumpiness or kind of pushiness with this. So when you can, make sure to do what helps you in terms of settling your nerves so you can focus and make the choices that come from an aligned place rather than a choices from a place that come from exasperation and frustration, okay? Now, this Mercury retrograde will also be trying Follis and Ceres over here in Capricorn. And this is an influence that covers the entirety of the year. It is one of the most unique and special influences of 2024. Because they are retrograde square, the transiting nodal axis, they're causing all of us to arrive at choice points that open opportunities down one timeline or another timeline that are not available on both timelines. So I described it to a client recently like this. You come to a fork in the road. On that fork in the road, they go in completely different directions. In the direction on the left, if you take that, you have certain options and opportunities from taking that direction. But if you take the direction on the right, there are other options and opportunities. The options that are available on the left are not the options that are available on the right. Retrograde squares force us into decisions at the fork in the road, and they open up and close timelines based on the available choices in one direction or another. This is a pretty straightforward one, though. Follis specifically talks about toxicity, and Ceres specifically talks about closures to cycles and completions. Together in the sign of Capricorn that deals with the structure of our lives and also businesses, which hosts Pluto closing out a cycle and a season, anything that has been causing you poison or toxicity is meant to close at this time. The obvious choice is the one that allows you to step into greater selfhood. That's the North Node here in Aries, greater understanding of who you are, because this Mercury retrograde speaks to the two of these, especially at the kickoff point. There is a sense of closure and finality to patterns, processes, paradigms, and in some cases, relationships that have proven themselves to be toxic, in particular to your mental health. Again, the definition I use of toxic is continued participation in a thing when we know it undermines our well-being and sabotages our desired outcomes. There is a closure to those issues available with this new moon. It may take several conversations since Mercury is going to retrograde. It may take a revisitation of the terms of closure with additional revelations toward the end of the Mercury retrograde or when Mercury goes direct on the 28th of the month. Okay. 
We do also have Mercury retrograde semi-sextile the shaman's asteroid here, which is allowing some latent revelation to show up when it comes to uh, the lessons that we have been working really hard to learn. It looks like there's an inkling of revelation about lessons we've been attempting to learn that shows itself at the start of the retrograde that gets cemented at the end of the retrograde when Mercury comes back to this fourth degree and closes out the shadow period and lands in the semi-sextile again. The, it's going to feel in many ways intuitive, the decisions that you have to make, specifically in the realm of relationships, to integrate the lessons that you've spent a lot of time learning. There are many things here that do need to be put down, put to bed, put to closure, and as such, and because of that, uh, the conversations that you're having over the course of the Mercury retrograde with people that require that closure to paradigm, pattern, process, or relationship, those conversations are going to show you okay, yeah, my intuition, my hunch was right. It is time to create some closure here, okay? This Mercury retrograde is going to square as well Uranus in Taurus. And I would say this is probably the most influential energy of the entire Mercury retrograde because it's going to touch Taurus three different times, whereas the other energies, there's only one contact. It's going to touch Uranus and Taurus three times. The Uranian influence is going to be dominating because it is also the planetary energy that is furthest from this Mercury. And so it enhances and intensifies uh, the capacity to speak without thinking, react from a place of wounded ego, pride, impulsivity, and rash or hasty responses and decisions. This can create some challenges when it comes to navigating to outcomes that we want initially. What this does, though, again, I mentioned this in the full new moon update, if you're listening to the exclusive about this Mercury retrograde, what this does is it facilitates a level of like a popping out for those of you who have been stuck for a long time in a situation that has to change and you've been biting your tongue and biting your time. This is when you may explode. That explosion is actually going to help shake you out of the situation and shake you loose. May require a little cleanup on the other side, some damage control, but it will ultimately be what sets you free, okay? For those of you, again, that normally have your foot in your mouth, you normally explode. You normally are, you know, telling everybody where to go and what to do. This is a period of time in which you really want to watch it because the tendency to, you know, act first and ask questions later will be at a high. And unfortunately, there will be things because of the high fixed energy of this Mercury retrograde season at, at its kickoff, there will be things that you're not going to be able to take back, words that can't be unheard, actions that can't be overlooked. So just be mindful. Know which camp you fall into. Okay. Additionally, throughout this period, we can receive or be the bearer of shocking, surprising news or feel like the speed at which life is coming at us is very overwhelming. Again, be very thoughtful about things agreed upon, plans made, contracts signed, as they may need to be redone, rescheduled, reexamined, recommunicated, replanned as we move through the fullness of Mercury retrograde and its shadow period. Okay, we have a sextile from Mercury to the creation goddess here at the beginning of Scorpio tail end of Libra. This too will have three meetups uh, and echo some of the closure 
or beginning of the end themes as she sits at the sign of alchemical transformation and completions, and that's Scorpio. This can include a lot of communication surrounding closures or change to a situation that needs to transform in some way in order to enhance your sovereignty and creative authority in an area of life. Again, look to the area of life that Virgo, Leo, and Gemini govern in order to get a better understanding of what this means for you. Okay. Now this could be related to a direct report, a project, a housing situation, a relationship. There's no way for me to know for sure without having to having a look at your chart, but chances are you have some awareness about what this is already as it may have been a long time coming as creation goddess has been at the tail end of Libra, retrograding back and forth into Scorpio for the majority of this year so far. Mercury will sextile her exactly on July 26th, August 13th, and September 9th. However, the whole period will be colored with these themes without creating change to once about creating change to one state of existence so that another state in which you're more sovereign can have with with greater access to your creative potential can thrive. Okay. Um think I talked about Mars no I only talked about I did talk about the Martian aspect okay good um Mars let's talk about the okay perfect and that's that's our Mercury retrograde aspects Okay, that's all of them. I love it. So if you need any help figuring out how to navigate through this Mercury retrograde, things come up, you already know certain things are about to be an issue, you can book a reading with me below at kmoonastro.com. There is also a 20% off code for a one hour reading and there are 30 minute readings if you just want to talk about Mercury retrograde and the upcoming eclipse themes as we are already in eclipse season and the path you're meant to be taking based on your chart, we can see that all through the blueprint of your incarnation, your natal chart in a reading, okay? Really looking forward to speaking with you.